scarcely a week goes by that Helen's calendar doesn't call them away to a conference or a lecture. In this case, it is to a staff meeting of the American Foundation for the Blind, to which Helen is advisor and counselor. Today, the Foundation is submitting for her approval a device for communicating with the deaf-blind and for enabling the deaf-blind to communicate with each other. The keyboard activates little metal prongs that speak directly to the fingertips in Braille. It is perhaps the most direct means yet invented of making contact with those who are both deaf and blind. Now, Helen types out, anyone can speak to us directly. When Helen takes time to relax, she is a merry companion. She is interested in everything and everybody. Spending an evening with Robert Helpman, the dancer, and Guthrie McClendick, the stage director, she seizes the opportunity to catch up with the amusement world. The theater gives her full measure, for she reads a play before she goes to it. Dance forms she must feel, so Robert Helpman volunteers to show her the difference between classical ballet and the modern dance. Mr. McClintock does not feel that Mr. Helpman has made his point, and suggests that they take Helen to study some modern dancing at close range. Then, from time to time, there is home again, where they sit among familiar things with curtains drawn, and are simply old friends. There is peace and quiet, there is music. So the dishes to be washed. As Polly washes the dishes, Helen shells pecans. Helen keeps a careful check on Polly. But when the radio is playing, it is hard to keep Helen's hand on her work. Then there is bed.
This, then, is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all.